Thank you. Hey, where you about to go? Y'all <laughs> <laughs> trying, try to go to Mango? They said you're going to Mango or something like that. What's that? I don't For us. Oh, Shakur Stevenson's love for his big brother Terrence Bud Crawford is so much that he's willing to destroy anyone at all who tries to disrespect Bud. This time, it's his buddy since his amateur days, Jaron Boots Ennis. Well, whenever you find Jaron Ennis and Terrence Crawford in the same sentence, you already know what's involved. Yeah. Yo, you know, in these rooms, they don't got you, they yeah, stay on my court. Yeah, they won't let you, they, 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 got, they got it, but you, you can plug it in. But they no, won't let you switch over. Like that. Yeah, it's the same case with Canelo Alvarez and David Benavidez. Only that many claim Terence Crawford and Jaron Ennis share so much similarities. In his latest call out of Terence Crawford, Jaron Ennis was quite disrespectful that he went as far as claiming he's the better fighter of the two. Terence Crawford's close win against Israel Madrimov brought him several criticisms from boxing fans and professionals, with many advising him never to face Canelo Alvarez since he couldn't knock Israel Madrimov out. It was bad too. Oh, 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 However, a few others believe Israel Madrimov is more than the low fighter many think he is, as he's the best 154 pounder out there. And for Terence Crawford to thrive after a long time out of the ring, he deserves some praises. Of these two categories, Jaron Ennis falls in the class of those who think Terence Crawford struggled against Israel Madrimov and he didn't shy away from voicing his sentiments. He said, You don't expect a person who struggled against a boxer with 10 fights to do anything against me? He knows I'm better and I'll beat him. That's why he's running. <laughs> sign a contract. <laughs> exactly, sign a contract. If he, wanted, if he wanted to fight, he would have stayed at 47. Just after he shared his thoughts, Shakur Stevenson moved towards him and questioned why he spoke about Bud in that manner. Jaron Boots Ennis didn't seem to care much, yet Shakur Stevenson kept warning him against such dumb statements, claiming Bud Crawford is everything he thinks he is, and Jaron Ennis has no right to troll his big brother in that manner. Shakur was obviously angry, but before it got physical, he was able to leave the scene and, of course, leave Jaron Ennis behind. Everyone that knows Shakur knows he speaks so highly of Terence Crawford, and not even Jaron Ennis would tolerate any form of insult to Crawford. Dude, and, uh, man, I swear he done caught this dude on the same. Boom! Dude, wobbling all around the ring. I'm like, what the f***? Speaking in admiration of Crawford, Shakur Stevenson said, Honestly, I think that Bud beats anybody who he gets in the ring with, even at a higher weight class," Shakur Stevenson told S News. I think he's got all the tools and ability to beat anybody and everybody. He's got punching power, boxing IQ, boxing skills and footwork. There's nothing he can't do in the ring, so I think he'd be a hard task for anybody. Another thing, his punching power translates to another weight class. He then continued, I've been in the gym and seen him hurt a heavyweight, a 200 pounds plus dude. He hurt him, and he was in there with wobbly legs. I was like, damn, this guy can punch that hard. <laughs> but it's like, uh, honestly, uh, Bud is very strong. A lot of people don't realize how strong he is as a fighter. As for Crawford and Jaron Ennis, the feud between them began when Terrence Crawford was about fighting Errol Spence. Although Terrence Crawford, being the winner of the undisputed welterweight title fight against Errol Spence Jr., undoubtedly became the top dog at 147 pounds, and he was expected to overcome another challenge to his supremacy from Jaron Boots Ennis. I always, I always said uh, Boots was, was, was a great talent. I always told. On the other hand, Ennis retained his International Boxing Federation interim world title in extremely impressive fashion against Romain Villa, becoming the first man to stop the game Colombian at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Following the victory, Ennis made no secret of the fact that he wanted the winner of Spence vs. Crawford next and confirmed he would be in attendance in Las Vegas on July 29th. When he was fighting Gary Russell. You know, um, I always, always supported them because they always say it. And when asked by Fight Hype about the prospect of future showdown with Boots, Crawford was full of praise for the 26-year-old and assured him his time will come. I always said that Boots is a great talent, and I've always told everybody that I support him. I've been supporting him since he was in the amateurs, and he was fighting Gary Russell. He remind uh, them so much of me, but seeing him, you know, I kind of see myself in him, and yes, he he deserve he deserve a title shot. He deserve it all. I always supported him because they said he reminded them so much of me. But seeing him, I see myself in him, and yes, he deserves a title shot, and he deserves it all. His time will come, but right now, business is business. 
And when Terence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. fought, Terence Crawford made history, becoming the first unified welterweight champion in the history of the four major belt era with a ninth round technical knockout win over Errol Spence Jr. last year. Crawford added Spence's World Boxing Association, World Boxing Council, and International Boxing Federation titles to his own World Boxing Organization crown. The knockout victory marked Crawford's 11th consecutive finish, with nine of them now coming in the sixth round or later. This, however, was the most impressive of them all, as Crawford put on a boxing masterclass to practically dominate the fight from the moment he dropped Spence in the second round. Junior's era, or will it be Terrence Bud Crawford? That was an unfamiliar position for Spence, who had not previously been dropped once in his accomplished career. By the end of the fight, he had gone down three separate times, a similar story as Devin the Dream Haney, who was dropped thrice en route to the very first loss of his career. Crawford finished the fight landing a stunning 60% of his power shots and 42% of his jabs. His 87 landed jabs were the most by a Spence opponent. The fight opened with Spence dictating terms and pressuring early, while Crawford cautiously and cleverly sat back, picking his moments to counter like he did late in the first round. While there were no major moments for either fighter, Spence overreached on one occasion, and Crawford was quick to counter with a strong left hand. Yo, look, man, I, I, I gotta fight this dude. He fighting his assholes. Everybody praising him. I, that's a dude I need to fight maybe after the rematch. It was just a glimpse of the kind of chess match that was expected in the early rounds, with Crawford known as more of an intentional slow starter, and Spence likelier to try to set the pace. Spence was able to do just that some more in the second with a combination of his movement, consistent jab, and relentless pressure causing problems. I always, I always said uh, Boots was, was, was a great talent. I always told but a straight left power jab from Crawford saw Spence suddenly drop for the first time in his career in the final moments of the second round. Crawford's power started to really tell in the fourth round as a big overhand left and series of brutal jabs landed and hurt Spence, continuing an incredible start for the 35-year-old. That carried over into the fifth too, with Crawford once again backing Spence up with his accuracy, speed, and textbook counter-punching. In the end, it was a matter of when and not if the fight would end, with Crawford dropping Spence another two times before sealing a TKO victory in the ninth round. Regardless of their similarities, Ennis is determined to prove that he's a few notches above him. As Crawford, and down goes Spence for the second time in the fight. But while his International Boxing Federation interim title has him slotted as Crawford's number one contender, the pound-for-pound -pound star appears to be ready to hand his body a reprieve and search for new challenges. Shortly after suffering the first defeat of his career, Spence revealed that he fully plans on activating his immediate rematch clause. Also, in addition to his plans to run things back, Spence is hoping that their sequel will take place at 154 pounds. With Crawford taking home the first win, he's in the driver's seat in terms of which weight division they'll compete at going forward. Crawford, as he sat down on his undisputed throne, didn't have any qualms about Spence's suggestions, claiming that his recent weight cut was a difficult one. Are you willing to do this rematch back at welterweight? Um, it's <clears throat> something I got to talk to my management about, but um, hopefully it's at uh, 154. News of Crawford possibly vacating his newly won titles and planting his flag at 154 pounds left Ennis a bit vexed. During a recent conversation with popular podcaster Wallow, Ennis expressed to him that he hopes Crawford will have a change of heart and remain put. He is a walking victim, said Ennis to Wallow through text message. Stay at 47 so we can get active. Crawford's team went nearly the full length of the 30-day negotiation period before informing the International Boxing Federation of its commitment to a second fight with Spence. Sanctioning bodies generally do not honor rematch clauses as a justifiable exception for mandatory title fights. International Boxing Federation Rule 3 B, in fact, prohibits the practice. I can't wait. I'm ready. So then that, that's a yes then. If you go up to 154, you definitely want that Crawford fight. I want to show the world and prove, you know, 
prove that I, you know, show my skills and my yeah. ability. You know? No contract for a championship contest shall contain any clause or any provision whatsoever, guaranteeing or in any way assuring or promising either contestant a return championship contest where such clause or provision interferes with the mandatory defense of a title. Most big fights tend to violate that rule. Crawford Spence falling right into that category. It was a risk that Crawford was willing to take to secure a career-defining victory and a life-changing, healthy eight-figure payday to go along with it. Based on the foregoing, the IBF has withdrawn recognition of Terence Crawford as the IBF welterweight world champion, confirmed the IBF, and has claimed the interim IBF title in a 12-round unanimous decision victory over Karen Chukadzian on January 7th in Washington, D.C. The IBF agreed to sanction the fight under such terms, given that Ennis, as the mandatory challenger at the time, did not have a path to immediately challenge for the title. Spence was ordered at the time to next face WBC mandatory challenger Keith Thurman. The sanctioning bodies are bound to a rotational system for unified titleists, which left the WBA and IBF in waiting. You jumped up out of my, my sanction body to go fight in the IBF, so what I know? What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? Would you rank that in the WBA or not? The WBA already recognized Iman Tastanionis as its secondary regular title holder and ordered his own mandatory title defense. Ennis was permitted to challenge for the interim IBF title, which he since defended in a ninth round knockout of Roman Villa atop a July 9th Showtime Championship boxing telecast from Atlantic City. The fight came with the official ruling that he would next challenge the Crawford Spence winner, at least from the IBF's viewpoint. There was prior bickering about the weight and terms for such a fight. Spence noted after his first career defeat that he planned to move up in weight, to which Crawford was initially amenable immediately after their fight. However, Crawford, who reserves the right to determine the weight per their contractual agreement, has since stated a willingness to fight at welterweight. Whatever the case, he is now on the hook to either proceed with that fight or resume his welterweight championship reign, which now comes with one less title in tow. Ennis will have to make a mandatory defense at some point whenever the IBF is able to determine such a challenger. The unbeaten rising star will be permitted a voluntary defense in the meantime. In an interview, Crawford gave his own reaction to what transpired and how he felt about his title loss and the situations around it. All right, you, you catch pick, up, you, little homie. You, catch up, man. If it don't matter, catch up. Yo, he picked the Evanese, Catch up. Was away under you just said it don't matter. Catch up. He, I'm he, talking about before not, that. He, he not about it. We already, we already know he's not about what he's talking about. I'm not about what? I'm not you, about you, what? You. Shockingly, he claimed he was unbothered. Crawford was asked on what he had to say regarding getting stripped by the International Boxing Federation, and he said, I'm not mad at him. I got what I needed and that was undisputed and the rest is history. I don't care about any of that. When asked if he was frustrated about getting stripped, he replied claiming he wasn't, saying, not at all. Like I said, I came into that fight looking to become undisputed. I became undisputed so there's nothing there for me to accomplish at that point in time. I did what I said I said I was going to do. I came, I saw, I conquered, and it's on to the next. You, want, you don't want to fight. You said I'm not about what? You don't want to fight. Man, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Fight. Right, go ahead, Look, you, right. you dreaming, man. You talking in your dreams. He was also asked about how he felt about being stripped so quickly after winning the belt when Spence was seemingly afforded allowances. It is what it is. They pick and choose who they want to grant certain things to. And if they was going to do something like that, I feel like they should have stripped Spence prior to the fight, given that they knew it was a two fight deal going into the fight. So who knows? They knew I couldn't just get out of my contract with Spence to fight Boots. So it is what it is. He was finally asked on what he had to say about Boots' championship status. And if it was a shame for Boots not to be able to win the full title in the ring, he said, yeah, I know that's not ideal how he wanted to win it. I know he's disappointed that he couldn't win it from a champion and whatnot. It's disappointing for him, but if I was him, I would just tell them I want to fight for it. I'd rather fight the hash three guy if I couldn't get the other guy. Don't send me a belt in the mail. What we know? I don't know nothing. I'm trying to find out what, what I know. Enlighten me. What you mean, enlighten me? You but it just seems like everybody cool with being email champions now and whatnot just to be called world champion he got three belts he got like two interim belts and now they're going to send him another belt so he'll have three of the same belts and it's like come on man you're walking around with three of the same belts however 
In a sad turn of events for Terence Crawford, while he lost his belt as a result of the rematch clause with Errol Spence Jr., the rematch was eventually canceled as it was announced early this year that Terence Crawford will not be fighting Errol Spence Jr. for a second time following injury and eye surgery revelations regarding his opponent. Bud, as Terence Crawford is fondly called, announced he's done with Spence after Errol the truth. Spence revealed he went under the knife for cataracts. In his statement, Terence Crawford said, Taking anything away from Bruce, bro. Where I am at in my career right now, all my eyes off to get to where I am. And I deserve to do whatever the fuck I want. I done heard it all now, Errol Spence. It's okay though, because all in all, I'm glad it's over and done with. I wish you well, my brother. As for Shakur Stevenson, ever since Sugar defeated Artem Harutunian, many have wondered where he will go next. Despite a mouthwatering $15 million offer on the table from top rank, Stevenson has decided to play the low waiting game. While the 27-year-old mulls over his options, Boots has listed the benefits if he joins him under the matchroom banner. In a conversation with Fight Hub TV, when asked about sending a message to the WBC lightweight champion, Ennis declared, Eddie Hearn does great things. When Stevenson at 22, zero, fought Harutunian before his home crowd in Newark, he was met with boos and slander. You know, he, gonna, he put that bullhorn behind you. He do the talking, all you gotta do is do the talking in the ring. As y'all see, I don't really talk too much. You know, I'm more on the quiet side. Eddie, Eddie in the back just going. It was not a homecoming that he expected, but that might change if he brought himself to the matchroom fold, as Ennis asserted. The welterweight champion continued, he treats his fighters right. You're gonna have the proper homecoming, everything. Lastly, Ennis27 pointed out that, as Hearn had prodigal mic skills, one could only focus inside the ring and on their opponent, leaving the talking to the British promoter. He concluded, he does the talking outside the ring, all you have to do is the talking inside it. I don't do the talking too much, I'm on the quiet side. Eddie's a machine, that's what I need because I don't talk too much. Jaron Ennis asked what he would tell Shakur Stevenson about signing with Matchroom. Eddie does great things, he treats his fighters right. You're gonna have the proper homecoming everything. He does the talking outside the ring, all you have to do is the talking inside it. And, uh, Eddie, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's up now. <laughs> Speaking of Eddie Hearn, uh, he recently just said that you outsold Mike Tyson. The Philadelphia native has made a strong case for Hearn and Matchroom Boxing as he tried his best to sway Stevenson. What's more, the latter also holds the matchroom linchpin in his regard, labeling him one of the best promoters. Are boxing stars aligning for them to come together? We might have to wait and see. Meanwhile, Ennis is keen on having a homecoming that Stevenson couldn't have. Crawford finished his business at welterweight when he defeated his main rival Errol Spence Jr. in a career-defining performance which saw him become undisputed champion in a second weight class. The two men had dominated the 147 division and finally agreed terms last year to settle who was the top dog. Despite many billing the clash as a 50 50 contest before the first bell, Bud dominated from the get-go, dropping his opponent three times before getting the stoppage in the ninth. When the pair decided to move up and wait, a void was created at welterweight, which Ennis was quick to fill. Boots is now signed to Matchroom, and his profile in the sport is increasing all the time. You gotta rock with your brother, right. like, regardless, no so matter it's, who it's, he fights. So it's safe to say that if they ever fight, you know what side he I'm gonna be with my brother, <laughs> for sure, but... The Philadelphia native carries power in both hands, boasts an incredible record of 29 knockouts from his 32 victories, and is yet to taste defeat. His last outing saw him stop former Crawford foe David Avanesian in the fifth one round quicker than his rival. With Crawford now looking for his next opponent, fans and pundits have been calling for him to face Ennis next, even if it means the Philly native needs to move up and wait. Speaking to Daz in boxing, three-weight world champion Stevenson has made his feelings clear about the potential matchup. He doesn't want to see it. I've got nothing but love for Bud, and I've got nothing but love for Boots. I'm closer with Bud. It's weird as I came up in the amateurs with Boots, and I've been in and around Boots, and I got mad love for him. Truthfully speaking, I don't want them to fight. I don't want to be right there watching them fight. Because of that, you don't want them to fight. Because of that, I don't want them to fight. Right, I right. don't want to be in the right there, that. like, yeah, yeah. what the? I feel like it's two different eras. Yeah, they're here at the same time, but it's two different eras. Bud is here, and he did his career, 
and is going to do everything he's supposed to do, and now it's Boots time coming behind him. They remind me of each other with their mentality, the way they switch, the way they think. Crawford has claimed Ennis brings little commercial value to the table and has instead been chasing a fight against Saul Canelo Alvarez, although that looks off the table for now, and that's all for now. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to get notified when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.